Okay, welcome to lesson 8.3. We're going to continue our studies in the applications of integration. And I know last day we looked at area. Well, guess what? Today we're going to look at volume. This time, the volumes of solids with what we call known cross sections. Now, if you think of what a cross section is, I always like to look at like a loaf of bread. And if I ever take one slice of the loaf of bread, that would represent a cross section of the loaf of bread. Now, in geometry, we learn formulas for finding volumes of common three dimensional solids like cubes, spheres, cones, prisms, and others. But calculus actually allows us to find volumes of solids whose bases are two dimensional regions with an x and y coordinate system and whose heights are formed by cross sections. And most often in calculus, those cross sections are formed by squares rectangles, semicircles, or triangles, which essentially stick out from the base to form the third dimension of the object. So um, I've given you formulas for common cross sections here, squares, rectangles, semicircle, triangle. Equilateral triangle might be a little bit uh, new or tricky, so um, really you can prove that formula yourself. You might have done it before in your pre-calculus studies, but nonetheless, there it is. Um, before I move on to the next page, I just want to show you what I mean by a two-dimensional region in the XY coordinate system with this cross section sticking out from the base. So if I were to draw something here, I'm going to try to draw a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional piece of paper. <laughs> so we have X or Y coordinate. Let me um, talk about a two-dimensional region like this. Okay. And let me now say that I am going to draw cross sections that are rectangles that stick out of the page. So if I were to take this sticking out of the page, you see I'm making it three dimensional. There is my rectangle. Uh, if I use this one here, here it is, another rectangle that I'm creating. Okay, I'm using this one smaller over here, another rectangle I'm creating. And so the idea is I create all these rectangles that come out of the page or stick out from the base of my two-dimensional region and then if I add them all up and I sum them up yes I will get the actual volume so to figure out the volume using calculus like I said it's the sum of all the cross sections and that's what this formula represents V the volume equals the integral from A to B of capital A where A is a function of X and gives the area of a representative cross section so if it's a square then it's s squared if it's a rectangle it's the width times height if it's a triangle it's you know base times height divided by two whatever that cross section will be okay this of course is in terms of dx where our slices are vertical along the x-axis but like in area questions we can slice this horizontally and we would be moving in the y-axis or they would be perpendicular to the y-axis, so same idea, but everything is in terms of dy. Alright, so let's look at example number one, and let's see if we can do this. I know this stuff sounds kind of weird, but nonetheless, I know you can do this. Just follow along and work through it slowly. Alright, find the volume of the solid whose base is a triangle, bounded by this equation, so y equals negative 2x plus 2. The equation x equals to 0. Ah. And then what else? y equals 0. Ah. Okay. So this is the base. Okay. The base is a triangle. And then it says whose cross sections are squares which are perpendicular to the x-axis. So in essence I'm taking a slice of bread here and when I draw it coming out of the page this is a square. Okay. So this here represents the side of a square. And then if I do another one, let's say over here, another square, right? Another square, another square, square that comes out of the page. And then of course I add them all up, I'll get the volume. So the volume equals to the integral from a to b of a times d of x. And the a and b values are limits. Yes, they go from 0 to 1 because that's how it spreads along the x-axis dx this is great and the question I have for us now is what is the side of the square yes the area since it's square is s squared but how do I figure out s well on this diagram the s represents this length in blue 
which just happens to be the y value, right? In this case, it's just the y value. But the y value as an expression of x is actually just negative 2x plus 2. So this is the same thing as the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 2x plus 2 all squared dx. And it's up to you how you want to find this integral. You can expand this out and then integrate using power rule. Or if you're getting uh, wanting a chance to do some review of reverse chain rule because it's some function squared, but that function has a derivative of negative 2, which means it should appear somewhere, and I'll make it appear. But of course, I have to balance it out. Remember all that stuff? Yes, you can do that as well. And if you do that, then what we have here, the negative 1 half still stays. When we do the integral, this disappears. And now we have negative 2x plus 2 all to the power of 3 over 3. We don't need a plus c because we're integrating from 0 to 1. But here we have the 1 half combined with the 1 third, which gives us negative 1 sixth. And then now we'll evaluate this, so negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2 plus 2, oh, that's 0, minus 0 plus 2 cubed. Uh, I think that's negative 1 6 times 2 cubed is what? 8, yep, so this is negative 8. That's 8 over 6, or just 4 over 3. So the volume of this solid, whose base is a triangle, where these cross-sections are squares coming out of the page, is actually four-thirds. Okay. Now, for the remaining examples, I'm not going to make you go ahead and do the integral, because I know you have practice and you can do it already. But I really am wanting to see if you can actually set up the integrals properly. Because once you set it up, the rest is just mechanics. The setting up part is really the learning, the new piece of learning in this particular lesson. Okay, so number two. Same picture, right? Same base in example number one. But this time I'm going to change my cross sections. Semicircles that are perpendicular to the x axis. Okay, so still perpendicular to the x axis. That's good, like this. But now if you think about what shape you get when you come on the page, they are semicircles. Uh, semicircles. Hmm, hmm. Well, for a semicircle, the area formula, once again, I should do this from 0 to 1, but the area formula is what? A half pi r squared dx. So the question I have for all of us is what is r? What is the radius? The radius is not the entire part, but only half of this. So the entire length here is the diameter, and that is given by the equation y, or the y value, which is negative 2x plus 2. But because we want just the radius, the radius is half of the diameter, it's half of negative 2x plus 2, which is actually negative x plus 1. And so now you're ready to plug it into the formula. The volume is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, a half and now it's negative x plus 1 all squared dx. And I know some people like to take out the constant, so I'll take out pi over 2, and I'll write it like this. That is perfectly fine. And because I said set up and do not integrate, I am done. Now that's how you figure out the volume of the solid with that base, which is a triangle. But this time the cross sections are semicircles that are perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay? Now, let's do part B. Same base again. This time, rectangles. Oh, okay, rectangles. Base times height, right? Rectangles of height one quarter. Oh, so the height is fixed at one quarter. But this time, they are perpendicular to the y-axis. Oh, oh, oh. Gotta erase my diagram. Oh, 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 oh. Perpendicular to the y-axis. They are now like this. And each of these rectangles have a height of one fourth, but the width, okay, the width is equal to the x value, right? Well, how do I find the x value in this case? Well, I can take this equation and solve for x. Y take away 2 equals to negative 2x. 
divide everything by negative 2, so negative 1 half y plus 1 is equal to x. And then don't forget, if I'm doing the volume now, this is in terms of dy, so I don't put 0 and 1 anymore because those are x limits. I need to go from 0 to 2, thank you, the y limits. And then now rectangles, which is then the width multiplied by the height. In this case, the width is the formula, negative 1 half y plus 1. That's the x value. And our height is a constant of 1 quarter. And that is perfectly fine. And once again, for those of you who like taking out the constant, go right ahead. But it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. All right, I'm going to ask you to try number three. Okay, I'll see if you can figure out the base, figure out the cross section, and then figure out the volume. All right, try three yourself first, press pause, then come back and check your answer with me, and then we'll do number four together. Press pause. Well, I don't know about you, but I'll just draw this picture first. x squared minus, oh sorry, negative x squared plus 2. A parabola that opens like that. And the vertex is at 2. y equals x. Ooh, like this. I think I need to find the volume of the solid bounded by this. So the region that I'm sketching in yellow is the base of my solid. And then it says whose cross sections are squares that are perpendicular to the x-axis. So square here, square, 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 a bunch of squares being added up to find volume. Okay? Perpendicular to the x-axis should mean that something is in terms of dx. Good. To find the limits of my integral, oh, 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 I need to, yes, find the intersection points. Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, I should have done that first. Find the intersection points. Negative x squared plus 2 equals x. Move everything to one side. Ooh, factoring again x equals to negative 2, x equals to 1. Sounds good to me. Negative 2, 1. Looks right. Volume then equals to the integral from negative 2 to 1. And then this is in terms of dx. But then the question is, what is the area cross-section formula? Because they are squares, I just need to find out the side length. And that side length just happens to be the difference between the... <gasps> This is right. This is the same thing as what we did last day. It's the difference between the top function minus the bottom function. That represents our side for our square. So the side here must be the top function, which is the parabola, negative x squared plus 2, minus the bottom function, which is just x. And this whole thing then must be squared because to find the area of a square, we take the side length and square it. Okay, there you go. Done. If you got that, give yourself a pat on the back. Yay! And if you didn't, press pause now and make those changes so that hopefully you can figure out what you did incorrectly. Okay. Let's end off today's lesson with number four. We saved the hardest for the end. Set up the intervals again, but for volumes of solids whose base, ah, the base in this time is a circle of radius one, but whose cross sections are totally different things. In part A, we're gonna talk about equilateral triangles that are perpendicular to the y-axis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So. They are looking like this, the perpendicular to the y-axis, and they come out of the page as equilateral triangles. Don't know if you actually see this. Equilateral triangles. 
equilateral triangles. Okay. Well, we know from the previous page the formula for an equilateral triangle is, yeah, root 3 over 4 times s squared. Okay. So, the volume would be equal to the integral from a to b of root 3 over 4 times s squared. Now, because they are perpendicular to the y-axis, we better use dy. And then that side length here represents this distance, which I'm going to highlight in blue, which just happens to be, well, this is x, right? And this is also negative x, or I guess if together, two of them would be, yeah, 2x. So notice the side length here of the equilateral triangle is equivalent just to 2x. But because we're doing it in terms of y, I need to solve for x in terms of y. So taking our equation x squared plus y squared equals to 1, I'm going to solve for x now. 1 minus y squared, x equals to the square root of 1 minus y squared. I know there's a plus or minus. This part here is the positive piece, yeah. And this part over here is the negative piece, you're right. And that's why I said the side length is just 2x. Or if you don't really like that, I could have just said the side length is the positive square root, 1 minus y squared, that's the yellow part, minus the negative square root, which is the blue part. And notice, you'll still get the same thing. You get 2 of the 1 minus y squared, or 2x. Right? Both ways work. It's up to you which one you want to use. Make sure you understand what's going on. This is the hardest part because now once we have this, we can dump this into our side formula here. One more thing I forgot, my limits of the integral. I'm going from the y from negative 1 to 1. So negative 1 to 1, root 3 over 4. And then now our s is 2 root 1 minus y squared, all squared dy. You can leave it like that, you can simplify, but on the AP exam, don't simplify. Leave it like this. You are done. And then for part B, yes, this time I'm saying, hmm, rectangles whose heights are three times their bases, and whose bases are perpendicular to y-axis. Okay, so the bases are still perpendicular, so my diagram is still okay, at least the base part. This time, though, the rectangles are have heights that are three times their bases, so really high, okay? So the base is still the same as the side length that we calculated in part A. The height is three times the base, so that's just three times two root one minus y squared, or six times root one minus y squared. And now we're ready to go ahead and plug it into our formula. Negative 1 to 1. The rectangle, of course, is the base, in this case, times the height. And once again, dy. So our base is 2 times root 1 minus y squared. Our height is 3 times that, so 6 times root 1 minus y squared dy. And that would be perfectly fine. Or if you like to combine these together, I can take out the 12. And then the root 1 minus y is, of course, two of them, the square root times itself. That square root is gone. This is good. This is also good. All right. This is probably the most difficult lesson we've done so far in this unit. So I'd ask you to spend some time, some quality time, looking through this and really understanding the concept of figuring out the area of the cross-section. That's the key part, okay? So go ahead and do some practice now, please. And we'll see you back here for Lesson 8.4.